So a few days ago, I was sitting right where I'm sitting right now, and I was looking through some old images that I shot in the Komodo Islands a few years ago, and I realized I have shot over 360,000 images over the last 10 years or so, and all of those images, all of that metadata, all that information is in one single Lightroom catalog. And I thought to myself, there must be a way to crunch these numbers and look at all this data and find certain themes in the way that I've been taking photos over the last 10 years. So of course, I turned to our God and Savior, ChatGPT, to help me with this, and and I was able to export all of that data from Lightroom and run a statistical analysis on it and find some really interesting trends in that data. So today in this video, I wanna take a closer look at this data, show you guys some of the charts and graphs that I've created using this data, and also show you guys how you can do this as well. Okay, so we are gonna be double fisting the phone, which I have a presentation that I made for you guys, and a little bit of coffee here, because we're having a little coffee chat. And as you can see, I shot 360,000 images over the last 10 years or so, and all these photos are in one single catalog. Contrary to popular belief, it is better to use one catalog and not you know, a bunch of different catalogs, one for each strip, your photos will get lost. It's gonna be so difficult for you to keep track of things. And as long as you're optimizing that one catalog every once in a while, that catalog should run just fine. So even with almost 400,000 photos, my catalog runs nice and smooth. But if you break down the photos per year, you can see that I shot a ton of photos between 2017 and 2018 with the number of photos that I was shooting over the last few years dropping off a little bit. Now, I think the reason for this is because I was absolutely gung-ho obsessed with photography back in 2017, 2018, and I still am to this day, but it was an unhealthy obsession early on. I was shooting all the time. Every day I was skipping work. I was going out on my lunch breaks. And I think that's one of the reasons why I am the photographer I am today is because I went through that period of obsession and I was learning all these skills. I think you do have to become obsessed with something if you do want to get really talented at it over time. Not saying I'm super talented, but I'm just saying, you know, that period of obsession is important for us in any creative field for that matter. Um, and as you can see, it kind of dropped off, especially in 2022. That was a bit of a tough year for me um, creatively, emotionally. So I definitely didn't take as many photos. And over the last few years, I've taken less photos, but I think the photos that I'm taking now are higher quality. I'm just a little bit more thoughtful when I'm out shooting. So that's definitely an interesting graph to look at. But let's break it down by camera now, because I think this is also very interesting. And the first time I ran this analysis, um, it gave me pretty much every camera that I've ever shot with. And I found this chart way too difficult to figure out what the hell was going on here. Um, so I eliminated any camera that I haven't shot at least 2000 photos on. And this is the graph that I got. I think it's a little bit more easy to understand. And I added labels for you guys. So as you can see back in 2017, I was shooting with the A7R2 quite a bit. That was my camera of choice. And I picked it up actually in 2016. That was like my first real camera, my first full frame camera. And I loved it, it was, it was amazing. Um, unfortunately, the 2016 data is not in this data set because it is in other catalogs. I didn't start using one catalog until 2017. So the data is not perfect, but you know, it's more or less, it's, it's pretty interesting and pretty telling. Um, 2018, I picked up the A7R3 uh, and that was a great upgrade, but I didn't like the color, so I traded to the A7 III. And I also picked up a Canon 5D Mark III because I was obsessed with color science and Canon had the best colors back in the day. By the way, I don't think this matters really much anymore nowadays. I think all camera brands have great color, so I wouldn't be obsessing about color science in 2025. But back in the day, it was important. I also picked up my very first drone in 2019, the Mavic 2 Pro. That thing served me incredibly well. I shot some of my favorite photos on that drone, um, and I still have it. I need to sell it because I don't use it anymore. I have uh, Mavic 3 Classic now, which is a great drone. Um, and then as you can see, pretty much through 2020, I was shooting with the drone and the a7 III. And then I picked up the Fuji X100V, which I shot a lot with. I've made a ton of videos about that camera here on the channel because I absolutely love it. It's a fantastic little everyday kind of carry point and shoot kind of camera, um, which has a lot of capability. So I used that a lot. Upgraded to the a7 IV in 2022. And then it's been basically shooting with the a7 IV and my Fuji X100V. And now my Fuji X106 for the last few years. Um, and then I I recently upgraded to the Sony A12 as well. And as you can see in 2025, I shot a little bit with the OM system OM3 and the Hasselblad X2D. I made videos on both of those cameras. You guys can check them out here on the channel. Very cool, interesting cameras. And I just think this chart's kind of interesting to see my camera progression over the years. But if you break it down even more and look at my most used cameras, you can see that by far and away, the Sony A7 III is the camera that I have shot the most photos on over the last few years. And I think some of my favorite images I've ever shot were shot on that camera. I was using it a lot in 2022. We were living here in Bali and we were pretty much the only expats here. So we had the entire island to ourselves. We were traveling to other islands nearby. Um, it was just an amazing experience. And I was shooting like crazy 
with that camera. Close second is the a7R 3 and then the a7 IV, and then the Fuji X100V. And as you can see, the Fuji X106 is down there as well. Now I do have the Sony A12, and I think that number is gonna change. That camera shoots ridiculously fast, and I find that I take more photos than usual shooting with it because the electronic shutter is absolutely redonkulous. Now, one thing that's not included in here is film cameras. Um, you know, the, the JPEG scans, Lightroom just doesn't know how to categorize them. And it was a little bit too difficult for me to include this in the data. So all the film that I've shot over the last few years is not included in this data set here. Okay, but let's look at lens usage as well. And same thing, when I first crunched the numbers, this is the graph that I got. It had every lens that I've ever shot with. Um, and it was way too confusing to look at. So I crunched it down a little bit more and it gave me this, which in my opinion is also still a little bit too confusing, but it does show kind of on what years I was using which specific lens. But I decided to organize this data in a way that's even a little bit easier to understand. And you can see my most used lens between 2017 and 2025 was the 85 millimeter F 1.4 G Master. I absolutely loved that lens. I was shooting these super cool zoomed in photos of coffee all at f1.4. And this is kind of where I feel like I found my love for photography. This is where I was shooting every single day. I was living in Northern Thailand, going to all these cafes. I was in a really cool photography community and I just loved capturing these really vibey still life photos of coffee and food. And I have very fond memories of all that. But as you can see, I also shot with the 35 F1.4 ZA, the original Distagon by Sony Zeiss, fantastic lens. The Sony 55 millimeter F1.4 ZA, also a Zeiss lens. And then more recently, the 35 millimeter F1.4 G Master. You can see there's some 70 to 200 in there, the, some 24 to 70, various lenses, um, and then just some other lenses that I've shot with. Uh, over the last few years. But while this chart is interesting, I wanted to break it down even more and look at which focal lengths I'm using the most. So as you can see here, 35 millimeters is by far and away my most used focal length. I shoot absolutely everything on the 35 millimeter prime. I love this lens, um, both the old 35 millimeter Distagon and the G Master that I use now. And if you guys wanna see a video that I created on the 35 millimeter focal length, you guys can click there to watch that. It's by far and away my favorite focal length. Um, you guys probably already know that by now. 85 millimeters is a close second. It's kind of tied with 24 to 70. And over time, that 24 to 70 is definitely gonna take that spot because pretty much these days, I only go out with my 35 prime and my 24 to 70 because those are just the two lenses that I enjoy shooting with. I get the versatility out of the zoom lens and I get just the clean and natural shooting experience with that 35 millimeter prime. I've also shot with 50 and 55 millimeter primes in there as well, 70 to 200. And you, as you can see, it just kind of falls off as I go down that list. That 43 millimeters is the Hasselblad X2D100C, which has a 43 millimeter full frame equivalent. And when I was crunching this data, I had to kind of group it around a little bit because the Fuji X100V and X106 data was showing 23 millimeters, which technically it is, but I wanted it to be all full frame equivalent. So this is all full frame equivalent data here. Now I also broke it down by focal length ranges. As you can see, I don't really shoot wider than 20 millimeters. I shoot a lot between 20 and 35, which most of that is at 35 millimeters, a little bit between 35 and 50 or 36 and 50 and quite a bit between 50 and 85 as well. And I've also shot a decent amount of photos uh, between 135 and 200 millimeters. But if you look at the average focal length by year, I think this is much telling because as you can see, I was shooting between 60 and 70 millimeters early on. That kind of spiked in 2020 when I first picked up that 70 to 200 millimeter lens. And then that has sharply dropped off uh, down to about 38 millimeters in 2025 because I really enjoy shooting with that 35 millimeter prime. Um, and I do want to start shooting with my 70 to 200 a little bit more. I really like shooting landscapes more telephoto. I think it adds so much interesting compression and you can really simplify your compositions in a way that look a little bit more appealing, a little bit more aesthetic, um, which is definitely my style. So I'm definitely going to start shooting with that lens a little bit more. Um, but now let's take a look at aperture. And this was also very interesting because as you can see, it appears that I've shot most of my images at f1.4. And it's true, I shoot a lot of images wide open, especially early on in my career at f1.4. And if I'm shooting with a zoom lens at f2.8, maybe that's because I'm lazy, but I think more importantly, it's because early on in my career, I really liked having that super shallow depth of field where I just absolutely obliterated the background because I was lazy. And if you look at average aperture by year, you can see how this changes over time. As you can see in 2017, my average aperture was quite low, hovering around f2. 
drastically pulled down by all those photos that are shot wide open at f1.4. And over the years, it slowly climbed up to where it is now, hovering around f5, because these days I shoot a lot more at f5.6, I shoot at f8. And I think the reason for that is because I'm a little bit more thoughtful with my compositions these days, and I'm not just taking the easy way out by completely obliterating the background and shooting telephoto um, and just, you know, blowing the background into absolutely nothing. I like to take the time and think about all the compositional elements in my scene and have a little bit more depth of field in my shot because it looks a little bit more realistic. But I still do like shooting wide open too. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And I think it adds a really nice creative effect to your images. So I'm a big fan of that. But looking at ISO here, this is also a little bit interesting. As you can see, it spikes quite a bit in 2025. And I think the reason for that is because I'm probably a little bit lazier with my ISO these days because number one, the cameras are a lot better. The Sony A1 too is insane with its low light performance. And also I just don't really care. I'm not really too fussed about image quality as much these days. If the image tells the story that I want it to tell, then having a little bit of grain in that image is not going to affect me. I have no issues with that whatsoever. So I'm totally okay with shooting at higher ISOs. And also I've been shooting a little bit more at night. So that could be, you know, the reason why that ISO kind of spikes up in 2025 there. Now looking at the time of day here, AM versus PM, it's pretty dead even there. And also photos taken by hour, you can see there's a big spike at 5 AM, which I do shoot a lot at sunrise, especially back in the day, I was shooting a lot at sunrise, but I don't know how much I trust this because I can't say for sure that the, the time setting on my camera was always correct over the last, you know, eight, nine years years of taking photos. You know, I'm constantly traveling and I'm not always resetting my camera to the correct time zone. So I don't know how accurate this is. And the same goes with the photos of the day of the week, but it doesn't really matter. It looks like there's an even split there. So that's the data that I've came up with. And honestly, there's probably a lot more ways that I can crunch this data. And if you guys have any more ideas as to how I can take this even further, let me know in the comments down below. I think this is a really interesting exercise for all of us to do. And speaking of that, if you guys want to do this, there's a few different options that you have to crunch your Lightroom data. Now the first one is a program called Lightroom Dashboard. And this is really cool. You just upload your Lightroom catalog to this website and it scans everything and it shows you all these different trends from your data. But unfortunately I couldn't get it to work. It's a really old script and it just doesn't seem to work with the newer Lightroom catalogs, unfortunately. But I did speak to the guy that created it and he did say that he's thinking about updating it. So if you guys wanna see this application come back, this is definitely the easiest way to crunch all of your Lightroom data. Drop a comment down below, I'll send him a message and show him that people want to see this program come back. I do think it's really interesting and a useful tool for us. So let me know in the comments down below if you want to see that. But I used another technique to do this and I used a Lightroom plugin called List View to export all of my Lightroom data into a CSV file. And then I uploaded that onto ChatGPT to help me crunch that data. But unfortunately, that CSV file was over 500 megabytes and the maximum upload limit to ChatGPT is 25 megabytes. So I asked ChatGPT how we can do this. And the way I did it was I uploaded that CSV file to Google Drive. And then I asked ChatGPT to generate me a code that I can use in Google Collab, which is basically an online code software using Python. I wish I could explain it better, but I know absolutely nothing about coding or Python or anything like that. But the way it works is you can type that script into Google Collab, you change out a few things so that CSV file is linked into that code, and then Google can go ahead and scrape all of that data and crunch it all for you and then create those graphs for you. So it was actually really easy to do. I thought it was gonna be super confusing. But if you guys do wanna do this, I put together a super detailed PDF document with all of the instructions and an initial prompt that you can plug into ChatGPT to get this process started. And if you guys wanna see that, you can click the first link in the description that'll send you to my website where you can sign up and then you'll get that PDF document that has all of the instructions. But I really think this is kind of an interesting thing to do. It's a fun little weekend thing that I decided to play around with. And I'm really happy I did because it does show that my style has been changing over the years. And it's also interesting to kind of look back at how you used to shoot and look at some of the themes that you can find in your metadata from all of the photos that you've shot over the years. But that is all for this video, guys. I just wanted to make kind of a fun little chit chat video showing you guys how I've done this. So maybe you guys can go out and do this too. But with that said, I'll be back with another video again very soon and I'll catch you guys in the next one.